Section two of the Adventures of Jimmy Skunk. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by John Leader. The Adventures of Jimmy Skunk by Thornton W. Burgess. Chapter five. Reddy Fox Sneaks Away. To sneak away is to steal away, trying to keep out of sight of everybody, and is usually done only by those who for some reason or other are ashamed to be seen. Just as soon as Reddy Fox could see, after Jimmy Skunk had thrown that terrible perfume in Reddy's face, he started for the green forest. He wanted to get away by himself. But he didn't trot with his head up and his big plumy tail carried proudly, as is usual with him. No, indeed. Instead, he hung his head, and his handsome tail was dropped between his legs. He was the very picture of shame. You see, that terrible perfume which Jimmy Skunk had thrown at him clung to his red coat, and he knew that he couldn't get rid of it, not for a long time, anyway. And he knew, too, that wherever he went his neighbors would hold their noses and make fun of him and that no one would have anything to do with him. So he sneaked away across the green meadows towards the green forest, and he felt too sick and mean and unhappy to even be angry with Sammy Jay, who was making fun of him and saying that he got no more than he deserved. Oh, poor Reddy! He didn't know what to do or, or where to go. He couldn't go home, for old Granny Fox would drive him out of the house. She had warned him time and again never to provoke Jimmy Skunk. And he knew that she never would forgive him if he should bring that terrible perfume near the home. He knew, too, that it would not be long before all the little people of the green forest and the green meadows would know what had happened to him. Sammy Jay would see to that. He knew just how they would point at him and make fun of him. He would never hear the last of it. He felt as if he never, never would be able to hold his head and his tail up again. Every few minutes he stopped to roll over and over on the ground, trying to get rid of that dreadful perfume. When he reached the green forest, he hurried over to the laughing brook to wash out his eyes. It was just his luck to have Billy Mink come along while he was doing this. Billy didn't need to be told what had happened. Phew! he exclaimed, holding on to his nose. Then he turned and hurried beyond the reach of that perfume. There he stopped and made fun of Reddy Fox and said all the provoking things he could think of. Reddy took no notice at all. He felt too miserable to quarrel. After he had washed his face, he felt better. Water wouldn't take away the awful smell, but it did take away the smart from his eyes. Then he tried to plan what to do next. The only thing I can do is to get as far away from everybody as I can, thought he. I guess I'll have to go up to the old pasture to live for a while. So he started for the old pasture, keeping as much out of sight as possible. On the way, he remembered that Old Man Coyote lived there. Of course, it would never do to go near Old Man Coyote's home, for if he smelled that awful perfume and discovered that he, Reddy, was the cause of it, he would certainly drive him out of the old pasture, and then where could he go? So Reddy went to the loneliest part of the old pasture, and crept into an old house that he and Granny had dug there long ago, when they had been forced to live in the old pasture, in the days when Farmer Brown's boy and Bowser the Hound had hunted them for stealing chickens. There he stretched himself out, and was perfectly miserable. It wouldn't be so bad if I'd really been to blame, but I wasn't. I didn't know Jimmy Skunk was in that barrel, and I didn't mean to start it rolling down the hill anyway. He muttered. It was all an accident, and— He stopped, and into his yellow eyes crept a look of suspicion. I wonder, said he slowly, if— Peter Rabbit knew that Jimmy Skunk was there and planned to get me into all this trouble. I wonder. End of chapter 5 Chapter 6 Peter Rabbit Doesn't Enjoy His Joke 
All the time that Jimmy Skunk was punishing Reddy Fox for rolling him downhill in a barrel, and while Reddy was sneaking away to the green forest to get out of sight, Peter Rabbit was lying low in the old house of Johnny Chuck, right near the place where Jimmy Skunk's wild ride had come to an end. It had been a great relief to Peter when he had seen Jimmy Skunk get to his feet, and he knew that Jimmy hadn't been hurt in that wild ride. Lying flat in the doorway of Johnny Chuck's old house, Peter could see all that went on without being seen himself, and he could hear all that was said. He chuckled as he saw Reddy Fox come up, and his eyes were popping right out with excitement as he waited for what would happen next. He felt sure that Reddy Fox was in for something unpleasant, and he was glad. Of course, that wasn't a bit nice of Peter. Right down in his heart Peter knew it, but he had been chased so often by Reddy and given so many dreadful frights that he felt now that he was getting even. So he chuckled as he waited for what was to happen. Suddenly that chuckle broke right off in the middle, and Peter cried, Ouch! He had felt a pain as if a hot needle had been thrust into him. It made him almost jump out of the doorway. But he remembered in time that it would never, never do for him to show himself outside, for right away Reddy Fox and Jimmy Skunk would suspect that he had something to do with that wild ride of Jimmy's in the barrel. So it would not do to show himself now. Oh, no, indeed. All he could do was to kick and squirm and twist his head around to see what was happening. It didn't take long to find out. Even as he looked, he felt another sharp pain which brought another ouch from him and made him kick harder than ever. Two very angry little insects were just getting ready to sting him again, and more were coming. They were yellow jackets, which you know belong to the wasp family, and carry very sharp little lances in their tails. The fact is, this old house of Johnny Chuck's had been deserted so long, the Yellow Jackets had decided that, as no one else was using it, they would, and they had begun to build their home just inside the hall. Poor Peter! What could he do? He didn't dare go out, and he simply couldn't stay where he was. Whatever he did must be done quickly, for it looked to him as if a regular army of yellow jackets was coming, and those little lances they carried were about the most painful things he knew of. By this time he had lost all interest in what was going on outside. There was quite enough going on inside, too much, in fact. He remembered that Johnny Chuck digs his house deep down on the ground. He looked down the long hall. It was dark down there. Perhaps, if he went down there, these angry little warriors wouldn't follow him. It was worth trying, anyway. So Peter scrambled to his feet and scurried down the long hall, and as he ran he cried, Ouch! Ouch! Hoo-hoo! Those sharp little lances were very busy, and there was no way of fighting back. At the end of the long hall was a snug little room, very dark, but cool and comfortable. It was just as he had hoped. The yellow jackets did not follow him down there. They had driven him away from their home, which was right near the entrance, and they were satisfied. But what a fix he was in! What a dreadful fix! He ached and smarted all over. My goodness, how he did smart! And to get out, he would have to go right past the yellow jacket home again. "'Oh, dear! I wish I'd never thought of such a joke,' moaned Peter, trying in vain to find a comfortable position. "'I guess I am served just right.' "'I rather think he was. Don't you?' End of chapter 6 Chapter 7 Sammy Jay Does Some Guessing Sammy Jay is a queer fellow. Although he is a scamp and dearly loves to make trouble for his neighbors, he is always ready to take their part when others make trouble for them. Many are the times he has given them warning of danger. This is one reason they are quite willing to overlook his own shortcomings. So, though in many ways he is no better than Reddy Fox, he dearly loves to upset Reddy's plans and is very apt to rejoice when Reddy gets into trouble. Of course, 
Being right there, he saw all that happened when Reddy ran against the old barrel at the top of the hill and sent it rolling. He had been quite as much surprised as Reddy to find that there was someone inside, and he had followed Reddy to see who it was. So, of course, he had seen what happened to Reddy. Now, instead of being sorry for Reddy, he had openly rejoiced. It seems to be just that way with a great many people. They like to see others who are considered very smart get into trouble. So Sammy had laughed and made fun of poor Reddy. In the first place it was very exciting, and Sammy dearly loves excitement. And then it would make such a splendid story to tell. And no one likes to carry tales more than does Sammy Jay. He watched Reddy sneak away to the green forest, and Jimmy Skunk slowly walk away in a very dignified manner. Then Sammy flew back to the old orchard to spread the news among the little people there. It wasn't until he reached the old orchard that he remembered Peter Rabbit. Instead of flying about telling everyone what had happened to Jimmy Skunk and Reddy Fox, he found a comfortable perch in an old apple tree and was strangely silent. The fact is, Sammy Jay was doing some hard thinking. He had suddenly begun to wonder. It had popped into that shrewd little head of his that it was very strange how suddenly Peter Rabbit had disappeared. Of course, thought Sammy. Jimmy Skunk is sure that Reddy rolled that barrel down the hill purposely, and I don't wonder that he does think so. But I saw it, and I know that it was all an accident so far as Reddy was concerned. I didn't know that Jimmy was in that barrel, and Reddy couldn't have known it, because he didn't come up here until after I did. But Peter Rabbit may have known. Why did Peter run so that he would have to jump over that barrel when he could have run right past it? Of course, he may have thought that if he could make Reddy run slam-bang against that barrel, it would stop Reddy long enough to give him a chance to get away. That would have been pretty smart of Peter, and quite like him. But somehow I have a feeling that he knew all the time that Jimmy Skunk was taking a nap inside, and that something was bound to happen if he was disturbed. The more I think of it, the more I believe that Peter did know, and that he planned the whole thing. If he did, it was one of the smartest tricks I ever heard of. I didn't think Peter had it in him. It was rather hard on Jimmy Skunk, but it got rid of Reddy Fox for a while. He won't dare show his face around here for a long time. That means that Peter will have one less worry on his mind. Hello, here comes Jimmy Skunk. I'll ask him a few questions. Jimmy came ambling along in his usual lazy manner. He had quite recovered his good nature. He felt that he was more than even with Reddy Fox, and, as he was none the worse for his wild ride in the barrel, he had quite forgotten that he had lost his temper. "'Hello, Jimmy. Have you seen Peter Rabbit this morning?' cried Sammy Jay. Jimmy looked up and grinned. "'Yes,' said he. "'I saw him up here early this morning. Why?' "'Did he see you go into that old barrel?' persisted Sammy. "'I don't know.' confessed Jimmy. He may have. What have you got on your mind, Sammy Jay? Nothing much. Only Reddy Fox was chasing him when he ran against that barrel and sent you rolling down the hill, replied Sammy. Jimmy pricked up his ears. Then Reddy didn't do it purposely, he exclaimed. No, replied Sammy. He didn't do it purposely. I am quite sure that he didn't know you were in it. But how about Peter Rabbit? I am wondering. And I'm doing a little guessing, too. End of chapter 7 Chapter 8 Jimmy Skunk Looks for Peter Jimmy Skunk looked very hard at Sammy Jay. Sammy Jay looked very hard at Jimmy Skunk. Then Sammy slowly shut one eye and as slowly opened it again. It was a wink. You mean said Jimmy Skunk, that you guess that Peter Rabbit knew that I was in that barrel, and that he jumped over it so as to make Reddy Fox run against it. Is that it? Sammy Jay said nothing, but winked again. Jimmy grinned. Then he looked thoughtful. I wonder, said he slowly, if Peter did it so as to gain time to get away from Reddy Fox. I wonder, 
said Sammy Jay. And I wonder if he did it just to get ready into trouble, continued Jimmy. I wonder, repeated Sammy Jay. And I wonder if he did it for a joke, a double joke on Reddy and myself. Jimmy went on, scratching his head thoughtfully. I wonder, said Sammy Jay once more, and burst out laughing. Now, Jimmy Skunk has a very shrewd little head on his shoulders. So that is your guess, is it? Well, I wouldn't be a bit surprised if you were right, said he, nodding his head. I think I will go look for Peter. I think he needs a lesson. Jokes that put other people in danger or make them uncomfortable can have no excuse. My neck might have been broken in that wild ride down the hill, and certainly I was made most uncomfortable. I felt as if everything inside me was shaken out of place and all mixed up. Even now my stomach feels a bit queer, as if it might not be just where it ought to be. By the way, what became of Peter after he jumped over the barrel? Sammy shook his head. I don't know, he confessed. It was very exciting when that barrel started rolling, and we knew by the sounds that there was someone inside it. I guess Reddy Fox forgot all about Peter. I know I did, and when the barrel broke to pieces against that stone down there, and you and Reddy faced each other, it was still more exciting. After it was over, I looked for Peter, but he was nowhere in sight. He hadn't had time to reach the old briar patch. I really would like to know myself what became of him. Jimmy Skunk turned and looked down the hill. Then, in his usual slow way, he started back towards the broken barrel. Where are you going? asked Sammy. To look for Peter Rabbit, replied Jimmy. I want to ask him a few questions. Jimmy Skunk ambled along down the hill. At first he was very angry as he thought of what Peter had done, and he made up his mind that Peter should be taught a lesson he would never forget. But as he ambled along, the funny side of the whole affair struck him, for Jimmy Skunk has a great sense of humor. And before he reached the bottom of the hill, his anger had all gone, and he was chuckling. I'm sorry if I did Reddy Fox an injustice, thought he, but he makes so much trouble for other people that I guess no one else will be sorry. He isn't likely to bother anyone for some time. Peter really ought to be punished, but somehow I don't feel so much like punishing him as I did. I'll just give him a little scare and let the scamp off with that. Now, I wonder where he can be. I have an idea he isn't very far away. Let me see. It seems to me I remember an old house of Johnny Chuck's not very far from here. I'll have a look in that. End of chapter 8 and end of section 2. Recording by John Leader, Bloomington, Illinois.